Hi everyone. My name is Vishnu Ar. I'm working as an integration developer in Techie Ecup Software Solutions. Today I'll be discussing about a topic that is related to MuleSoft, where we'll be implementing O2.0 by using Mule O2 provider. So let me give an introduction about O2.0. O2.0 is nothing but an industrial standard protocol for authorization. So we need to know some keywords that will be coming in handy in further of this video. So we have something called as O dance. This O dance is nothing but an authentication process that is performed by the client, Mule application, and the O2.0 provider. Mule application is nothing but the application which is secured by the O2.0 policy. The client is an application that wants the access for the above application. And OAuth provider is a software that provides the security token to the client and validates the token. So there are many third-party OAuth providers like Okta, GitHub, Salesforce. But MuleSoft has its own OAuth provider that we are going to use, which is known as the Mule OAuth provider. So what is this OAuth dance? This OAuth dance is nothing but it is the authentication, as I mentioned earlier. So we will be having a client application and there will be an API that will be giving the implementation. So when the client application needs the access for this API, initially the request will be going into an auth provider and this auth provider will provide a access token. So the client application will send a request by using the header as authorization along with this access token and the request will be sent to the API. Now the API will validate whether this access token that is received is valid or not. If it is valid, then the API will be giving the response to the client application. Now, when it comes to MuleSoft, we have this Mule O2.0 provider that is an alternate developed by the MuleSoft that can be used in any organization. So this Mule O2.0 provider module has a provider module provided in the Anypoint exchange. And the Mule O2.0 provider modules allows a Mule application to be configured as an authentication manager in an O2.0 dance. So with this role, the application will be able to authenticate the registered clients, grant the tokens, validate the tokens, or register and delete clients all during the execution of this flow. And the O2.0 provider module will contain four operations, which are nothing but create client, delete client, validate token, revoke token, so one thing you have to note is that there is no separate operation for the get token in this auth provider, but it has a built-in operation provided in the mule auth provider configuration. Now let us see how we can implement this mule o2.0 provider in Anypoint Studio. Then we'll be seeing how to deploy it and how we can utilize the same for giving an access to an API that is already exposed. Now you can see that we have a module known as O2.0 provider, which has create client, delete client, revoke token, as well as validate token. So for this, I'll be explaining about the create client as well as validate token. Now, whenever we need to get the access for any token, first we need to have a client. So for creating the client, we'll be having a flow, which will be starting with the listener with the path as create client. And you will be having the create client component that will be coming from the O2 provider. So inside that, we have two sections. One will be having the basic settings and there will be a general. So this general will basically contain the client ID, the secret, and uh, it will be having some details regarding the client name and the redirect URIs. So in my case, the client ID, secret, and client name will be passed as the header when the request comes for this creating the client. And if you see the configuration, inside the mule configuration, what we have is we'll be having a client store and we'll be having a token store. So this client store is basically just used to store the uh, client details that is coming in the request. So this is an object store, which will be storing it. And when you go down, you'll be having a supporter grant types. So for my scenario, I have taken client credential as the grant type for O2.0. So you can have multiple other details that is like uh, we can have the scopes or default scopes that can be defined inside it. For my purpose, I am not defining anything. I'm just having a grant type that is client credential and there will be a path. So this path will be, this will be for the token. Now, as I said, the token generation will be taken care by the configuration itself. So this token path will be inside the configuration and there will be an object store that is related to the token or for storing the token. 
And if you need any refresh token, you can have the refresh token strategy also. And one more thing you have to notice is that we have something called as token TTL. This is token time to live, which will be one hour in my case. So that is about the configuration. And if you see after this create client, I'll be having a response, which will be the client is successfully created. That will be hard coded. So this is about the create client. Now, after creating the client, you will be getting the token from this component itself. Once you get the token, there should be some validation that is done for the token. So this validation will be done in a separate flow where you will be having another listener, which will be listening to the endpoint that is validate token. And this validate token will have the basic settings same as the create client itself. But the difference will be in the general where the access token will be having uh, a data view code. So this data view code is basically whenever we are trying to access, uh, like validate the token, the token will be passed. Now the token will be coming in the header with bearer uh, and uh, the token that will be there. So we need to first capture that bearer token and we need to split it and we need to capture the token part alone. The bearer needs to be neglected. Now, whatever this component is doing is it will get the token, it will validate it. Then if the token is correct, then it will give a correct response. Otherwise it will have a error. So now it comes to the implementation. I, for the demo purpose, I have created a simple implementation where I am having a listener and I'll be having a get method for the endpoint message. So it will be giving a success message. Now we need to deploy them both to the runtime manager that is available in the endpoint platform. So uh, for the time sake, I have deployed both of them. Now, if you go into the runtime manager, you will be able to see one new load provider that will be the uh, auth provider app as well as you will be having the implementation app that will be present. Now this policy will be enforced by using API manager and the application is present in the runtime manager. Now we need this implementation, whatever we have that should be present in the API manager. For that, we can have two methods. Either you can use auto discovery or you can use API proxy. So for uh, my use case, I have used the API proxy. So for creating a proxy, what you need to do is you need to configure, you need to add an API where you need to configure it as gateway. Then we need to have a proxy application. This uh, proxy type should be deploy a proxy application and the specific runtime that you are trying to deploy it to. So once we give the necessary details, after this, there will be API. So uh, let me show you what is inside the API also. So if you go the, after giving the proxy app name, if you go inside the API, you can see from your exchange, you can select whatever API you need, or you can create a new API. So while creating the new API, you need to give a name for the API as well as you need to select the asset type. So for your purpose, you can use Rust API or HTTP API according to your use case or your scenario. Now, once uh, these configurations are done, we need to uh, click next and there will be a downstream as well as there will be an upstream. So this downstream is nothing but if you see like uh, this downstream will be having the details related to the protocol. So this is basically for the proxy endpoint. So now for the proxy, you can select whether you need HTTP or HTTPS. I'll be going with HTTP. And in the base path, you need to have a path. This will be coming along with your proxy application. After that, if you click next, you will see an upstream URL. So this upstream URL is the implementation URL that you need to provide. So basically what it is doing is it will create a proxy which will act on top of the already running application. So for me, the already running application is the sample auth implementation. So I need to get the endpoint from here and I need to have the resource path for the uh, exact resource. So in my case, it will be message. So we need to have this host as well as the resource path and we need to provide it in the upstream URL. So once it is done, it will get, uh, it will get uh, deployed. And once the deployment is done, you will be able to see it in the runtime manager itself where there will be one application that will be running. So the configuration part of it is done. If we need to create a policy, we need to go to the API manager. So inside the API manager, if you see whatever implementation I have, it will show up on the API manager. So this implementation, I need to add a policy. So we have a policy section. 
Inside it, we need to add a policy and the policy that should be added should be O2.0 access token enforcement using new load provider. Now, what we need to provide inside this policy is, if you go inside the policy, you can define the scope. If uh, you need to restrict your APIs uh, related to certain scopes, you can use this scope session. For me, I am giving all the scopes. Then we have an access token validation endpoint. So basically what happens is when I pass this token, there should be a validation that should be done in order to check whether the token is valid or not. So this endpoint will be used for validating whether the token that I have passed is authentic or not. And it will be going to the second flow that I have created in that new O2.0 provider application. And this keep client ID validation is nothing but when I am trying to hit this API, I can have an optional client ID that should be passed or I can skip that. So as I am giving a token based approach, I am not uh, having the extra overhead of passing a client ID also. So these are the configuration that needs to be given inside that and you need to turn it on for the particular API. So you have an option to turn it on and you, if you don't need the policy and you can turn it off by using this toggle. So now when you are trying to hit it, you can use any uh, API testing tools. For my case, I'll be using a Postman. So now, as I told, initially, we need to create a client and for the client, we need to get the token. So initial call that will be made will be for getting the client. So, so there we need to provide a client ID, client secret and client name. So this is going to hit the auth provider application that we have deployed. So once this is hit, we will get a message that client is successfully created. So I will hit it. Now I got a message that the client is successfully created. So once the client is created, you need to get the token. So for getting the token, we need to go to this endpoint, get token endpoint, and we need to hit the endpoint with the client ID and client secret that you have provided and along with the grant type. Now with this, uh, I have provided the client credential and I will be getting an access token. So I'll hit it. Now I got the access token. You need to copy this access token and the token type should be bearer. So now we got the token also generated and this token will have a lifespan of one hour. If you try to hit the implementation, now I'm not passing any header. I'm not passing the authorization header and I'm trying to hit it. Now what happens is I'll get an error with the 400 bad request where the access token was not provided message will be there. That will be the error message. So if I need to get the access for this resource, I need to pass the exact token that I got from the get token call. So I'll be passing that token. Now, once I pass this, I'll be getting the access for the resource and I got the message back that it is a success. So this is about the implementation part and how you can use this O2 provider for giving the O2.0 implementation. Then there is one more thing that we should take care. Whenever we are creating the client, it will be using an object store. So now this object store by default has a expiry time of 30 days. So if the object store get expired, whatever client details that we have stored in the object store will be lost. So we need to have a mechanism where we can refresh the client store before it expires. So for that, I have built another flow, which will be a scheduler and the scheduler timeline can be anywhere be, uh, like between 30 days. So before 30 days, I need to refresh it. So I'll be having a retrieval where I'll be retrieving the client details from the client object store. Once I retrieve the client details, I'll be having a for each so that I can send it individually. And this will set a header where the client ID secret as well as name that will be coming from this retrieval object store which will be uh, passed into this for each. And this flow reference is referring to the same flow that we have for creating the client. So this way, each client that is present in this client object store will get refreshed every 30 days. Before every 30 days, it will get refreshed so that uh, the clients will be able to access the token without any uh, hindrance or without having any error. So uh, this is about the Mule O2 provider. And this uh, is used whenever the client or whenever the uh, customer that you are going to work for is not ready to use a third party application for giving the authentication like Okta, then you can go for this Mule as the auth provider. 
so that's it thank you everyone for watching have a great day